I'm Tom Baker, this is Chasing Cars, and this is the facelifted Volvo XC60. The XC60 is the most popular Volvo here in Australia, and it's actually one of the more popular mid-size luxury SUVs in our market. It's also a popular vehicle around the world, and for a good reason. For a lot of families, the XC60 is right sized and it offers that mid-size SUV positioning and higher driving position that many people want. And in today's video, I'm gonna explain why the XC60 is actually one of our preferred luxury crossovers here at Chasing Cars. It's timely to do a video on this car as well because the XC60 has just been updated for 2022 with its midlife facelift. This is the second generation XC60. It sits on Volvo's SPA scalable product architecture platform along with cars like the XC90 and the V60 Cross Country, which Johnny actually reviewed recently on the channel. But this one is the midsize five seat SUV. The one I've brought along here is the 2022 XC60 B6R design. What does that mean? Well, it means it's the $82,000 spec that currently sits at the top of the range, at least until a new plug-in hybrid arrives with more range than before. But the B6 is a turbocharged, supercharged, two liter petrol four cylinder with a new 48 volt mild hybrid system. There are no more diesels, which some people won't be happy about. The entry level engine is the B5, which is a turbocharged petrol four cylinder with a mild hybrid system. But you can still choose the XC60 in base momentum form, mid-spec inscription, and top-spec R design. The range kicks off at about $69,000. This car is $82,000, but then it also has another $10,000 worth of options, meaning that as it sits, this one is about 100 grand on the road, which isn't cheap. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about how you should option your XC60, what you really need and what you probably don't, our recommended specification, and what this car is really like to live with and to drive. But before we get started, hit subscribe, and I'm gonna tell you the three things I like best about this car and the three things that I don't like so much. One thing that's less ideal about the XC60 is that it can get quite expensive quite quickly if you insist on the R design specification that I've brought along here. Certainly it looks cool, particularly in this crystal white paint with all of the black accents and its standard 21 inch wheels. But even as standard, it's about 90 grand drive away Give it air suspension, which you'll want on such large wheels and a smattering of other options, and you're touching six figures on the road. And then all of a sudden you're talking about performance SUV territory with some other manufacturers. Worth noting though, that the lesser trims are better value. The XC60 adopts Volvo's new Google Android based operating system. And while it does bring some elements of the interior more up to date, it's not as easy to use as the previous gen Volvo sensor system, in my opinion. There are less customization options in the screen. Some of the old tile systems have been replaced by just a smaller amount of options here. It's more difficult to customize the driver's digital display, which is a Google map or nothing. You can no longer put your media in there, for instance. So while it's simpler and in some ways better, Volvo have removed a number of those fine tuning and customization features from their touchscreen. And when you live with a car for five years or so, and you really want to set it up how you like it, simple or as simple as possible is not always best. If you're looking for a really fuel efficient family SUV, the XC60 kind of struggles unless you go for the plug-in hybrid, which is also really expensive. That's because while Volvo has moved to a range of mild hybrid engines, they're petrol only. And both the B5 and the B6 in our testing use about 10 liters per 100 Ks. It's a little bit more than competing petrol engines in cars like the Audi Q5, and it's a lot more than you'd use in a diesel version. Now, the pre-facelift XC60 did offer a D4 and even a D5 diesel at various points in time. Those have now been scrapped as part of Volvo's commitment to getting to zero emissions. But what this car is currently lacking is a fully electric version like the BMW iX3, which would of course fully commit to that philosophy. Volvo really nails design, and I think the XC60 demonstrates that perfectly. The designers knew when to put the pencil down, so it's a simple shape that works really well, and it's clearly elegant and high-end from all of those fine details. 
Now this R design looks really cool, but the inscription trim is also really lovely with more bright accents replacing what is black on this car and giving it a real luxury touch. So for me, I like the looks of this car, both inside and out. Unlike so many luxury SUVs we test, the Volvo XC60 actually rides comfortably. And that's particularly so if you option the $2,600 air suspension with 4C. Now, as standard, the XC60 comes on what Volvo calls its dynamic chassis, so tuned a little bit more sporty. I would absolutely recommend spending 2,600 bucks on air suspension for this car because it keeps body control really good, but it soaks up the kinds of bumps we get on Australian suburban and country roads extremely well. This car is a pleasure to drive. It might be a cliche, but Volvo really does do the best seats in the car industry. The XC60 seats are so comfortable no matter where you're sitting in this car, apart from maybe the rear middle seat. But both the driver's seat and the front passenger seat have full electric adjustment and immense levels of support that mean you get out of this car after an eight hour drive feeling refreshed. Unfortunately, the R design means you only get a black interior or a dark gray interior, but if you go for the momentum or the inscription, you can choose a wider array of colors, including a really nice blonde interior, though that won't be as family friendly as black. Jumping into the front of the Volvo XC60 reveals this to be a true luxury SUV. Volvo at one point in time might have been a premium or semi-premium manufacturer, but they now genuinely play alongside Mercedes, BMW, Audi, and Lexus in our view, and this interior really demonstrates that. It's high quality, the mix of materials is mostly good with one strange quirk, which I'll come back to. The technology is pretty well integrated and the seats are so good as to put this car into a class of its own. If you're looking for a luxurious family SUV that is truly comfortable, you don't really need to look any further than the Volvo XC60. It's always good to test drive two, three or four cars when you're looking at a minimum to make sure you're understanding what's exactly right for your needs. But I think this car would suit a lot of families looking to upgrade into an SUV that's a little bit more premium. Now, as I mentioned up front, the one we have here is the most expensive. It's the B6R design, but there's no base model XC60. Even the entry level B5 Momentum is still nicely appointed with standard leather seats, standard 14 way power adjustment in both front seats, for instance and things like this nicely finished dashboard, the touchscreen in the center here with a vertical orientation, all of that is standard, though the best specification for the XC60 is the B5 inscription, which is about six grand cheaper than this car. It doesn't get the sporty black accents outside and it gets wood instead of metal trim here, but you still get absolutely beautiful leather seats in this car in either charcoal, which is this color, or blonde, which really gives the interior a bit of a lift and makes it a bit brighter, particularly because it's paired to light colored headlining too. Now, the basic package in the XC60 is really all you need, but you can option it up with some truly luxurious features if you want to. Those include two versions of what Volvo Australia calls the lifestyle package, which adds privacy glass, a sunroof, and an upmarket stereo. So you can choose it with a Harman Kardon stereo, which is what this car is fitted to. That sounds good or you can opt for a Bowers and Wilkins stereo, which sounds great. One of the best stereos Chasing Cars has ever tested in a car. So that's exactly what I would do because I really like my music. Sure, it's an indulgence, but when you're gonna live with a car for years and years and you wanna take it on long road trips, a great stereo is important. Great seats are important. The XC60 nails the seats and you can option the Bowers and Wilkins if you want to. Now, interestingly, in the R design, you can only get a dark interior, either charcoal or slate, which is like a dark gray. And the seats have this cool textile on the bolsters, which I really like, but you can also spend three grand more and get fine Nappa leather, which is perforated and adds seat cooling as well. The uh, fine Nappa can also be optioned on the inscription to give the interior even more of a lift. Now, I mentioned the mix of materials was a little bit quirky, and that's because Volvo are moving towards a more environmentally friendly aspect of, of building cars. And that means that there are things being introduced into the interior which are not quite as premium as they once were, including this urethane steering wheel, which has absolutely no place in an $82,000 car. Now, it's certainly not like a base Toyota Corolla. I'm not gonna suggest that. But anyone that's driven a luxury car and knows what a leather steering wheel is like, knows that this isn't leather. But the inscription comes with a leather steering wheel. So if you want your Volvo interior to be as premium as possible, go for the inscription, which gets a leather steering wheel, 
but the inscription gets a urethane gear shifter, but the R design gets a leather gear shifter, and the base car gets a plastic shifter and steering wheel. So you need to review the specification sheet very carefully if you wanna have the best possible materials in your car. The rule of thumb is just keep going with the inscription and that still has what you'd need. Eventually, Volvos are gonna eliminate leather entirely from their cabins, which is fine. I mean, I'm not you know, some lover of animal skin or something. I just think that this plastic steering wheel isn't quite up to scratch from how it feels underhand. That brings me on to the technology, which is interesting because the 2022 XC60 becomes the first Volvo here in Australia to get the new Google-driven operating system in this car. And in some ways, it's a step forward. The navigation is superb because it is Google Maps. Nowhere to avoid it, it's Google Maps. It has that spoken, hey, insert name of search provider here that you can use to drive voice searches. The graphics are good, the processing power is good, it's easy to use, it's fantastic. But a number of other aspects of this system aren't as easy to use or as detailed as they were with the previous Volvo Census operating system. There's no true EQ adjustment, for instance, which there was with Volvo Census. There are far fewer options to choose from in the menu here to customize things. Uh, there are fewer options for customizing the look of your digital display in front of you. You can't put a media there. You can only choose between having Google Maps or absolutely nothing in front of you and some trip computer information. With the previous year's car, you could at least put your album and song and artist in front of you if you wanted to run navigation over here. So effectively, what they've done is they've simplified the system. They've given it Google Maps. They've given it Google services. You can power your smart home. You can turn on your lights at home. You've got the Google Assistant feature in here. So all of that feels up to date, but they have oversimplified some of the systems a little bit too far for my liking. Thankfully though, there's Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but that kind of makes me think, well, BMWs, Audis, Mercs, they all have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so you can choose between a fully featured OEM system or a smartphone driven system. I'm not sure the integrated software in the Volvo needed to be handed over to Google as well. That's just my personal opinion. In terms of practicality, we've got cup holders between the seats, wireless smartphone charger, 12 volt socket up here in front of the shifter, a bin between the seats with two USB-C ports, and big door bins that can take a large water bottle. Jumping into the back of the Volvo XC60, and you'll find it's a classic mid-size SUV, meaning it's comfortable for four adults with a fifth seat here in the middle for occasional use. Interestingly, at 4,708 millimeters in length, the XC60 just breaks out of what we would classify on chasing cars as midsize SUV. Now we will make an exception for it. It's only eight mil longer than our sort of traditional midsize cutoff, but interesting to note regardless. Now I'm sitting behind my own driving position. I'm six foot tall and I have fairly long legs and you can see that I have a lot of room here in the back of the XC60. Leg room is no trouble. Toe room is excellent even with the driver's seat set at its lowest position and headroom beneath this panoramic sunroof is okay. I've got about an inch and a half or so. Now because this is the R design, we have a dark headliner in here, but the cabin doesn't feel too dark. I would say because even the charcoal leather option is still not truly black. It's a very dark gray and the windows are nice and big and conventional so kids are gonna have a good view out here. Now, speaking of the window, the sill just beneath it is nice soft plastic, so it absorbs light, absorbs noise, and if anyone rests their limb or arm or head against this, then it's nice and soft. In fact, quality, I would say, feels a little bit better than a vehicle like an Audi Q5, which is high praise, I think, for me. Now, getting someone in this middle seat is gonna be a bit more of a challenge in the R design because we have these sporty bolsters even on the outboard seats in the back for this car, so that leaves this middle seat as quite a perch. However, there are a number of cool tricks here in the second row of the XC60, including integrated booster seats, there we go, in the back seats. So uh, if you've got a slightly older child that doesn't need to be in a capsule anymore, but they still wanna have an elevated seating position with a good view out, you can get that. And I actually have very fond memories of these because I grew up in Volvos myself uh, on integrated booster seats uh, long before um, legislation required toddlers to be sitting in, uh, in child seats up until quite an old age as they do now. Uh, these booster seats were absolutely awesome. So very fond memories of those. Now here in the center, we have adjustable fan speed and actually quad zone climate control is standard on the XC60 from the base model up, which is cool. 
Oddly, the plug-in hybrid only has two zone. Go figure. We have air vents here, and we also have air vents in the B pillar. So there's no shortage of air coming into the back of the XC60. Definitely a consideration for parents with kids who don't mind a spew on a road trip. Keeping the air moving is good, but we don't get those cool speaker grills here in the second row. We get some stitched leather down here on the doors, textile inserts, and on the whole, it is comfortable. It's pretty spacious, but let's check out what it's like to fit two child seats here in the back. As for fitting child seats to the XC60, we've got our Ford's facing toddler seat over here behind the driver, so not compromise their driving position, and we've got the rear facing infant capsule behind the passenger seat. Now, fitment isn't too bad, actually. The Isofix points are exposed behind pivot up type covers, which is great, you're not gonna lose them, and you're not trying to jam Isofix points down somewhere into the seat where they're hidden. Now, you do get these integrated headrests in Volvos, and the gap to fit the top tether um, point through there is a little bit narrow, but it's still pretty doable. If you've got the cargo cover in place, it's a little fiddly to get uh, behind that, but all in all, you can get it done just fine. And as you can see here, there is space for our two seats. We did have to slide the passenger seat forward by a few centimeters in order to fit the uh, infant capsule, but not too big of a deal. Uh, getting out if you're in the middle is simple enough climbing through beneath my driving position here and sitting myself in the middle. You can see I've got room, but you wouldn't want to be too much broader than myself. Other points to note, the door opening is okay, but it could be a little bit wider. It's certainly nowhere near 90 degrees in this car and the child locks, they're electric and they're done from the driver's seat. So you don't have to go fiddling around in the door or anything like that. It's one touch, which is fantastic. When it comes to boot space, Volvo says the XC60 has 505 litres on offer. Now, the Chasing Cars soccer ball test or football test comes out at 42 balls. Leaving the balls to one side, you do get a nice square boot in the XC60, though it isn't as deep as in some other competitors. It gets nice and low to the ground though, particularly if you option the air suspension because you have controls here in the boot to raise and lower the load height of the vehicle, making it a lot easier to take heavy stuff in and out of this vehicle. You also get a nice little metal finisher here to partially protect the paint. You get a net off to the left side. You get a cargo blind that can be fixed up here so it retracts when the door opens. And underneath this hard boot floor, you'll find a space saver spare, the compressor for the air suspension, and two tanks of air. Plus a power tailgate is standard on every single spec of the XC60 sold in Australia. Now, with the back door closed on this car, we can see some of the design cues from the 2022 update, including the fact that there's a new rear diffuser down here that hides any hint of an exhaust pipe, which is quite interesting. And the R design is the only grade to get kind of painted bumpers. If you go for one of the lesser grades, they are unpainted cladding. Now we get Volvo badging here, as we've had for many years on Volvos. XC60 down the bottom left, and B6 all drive on the bottom right. A few years ago, Volvos were really easy to like, but difficult to recommend as an ownership proposition because their servicing was so expensive. The brand has put in a lot of work here in Australia to basically subsidize the cost of maintenance, and these cars are no longer dear to service, particularly if you buy an upfront service pack. So you need to maintain this car every 12 months or 15,000 kilometers, and you can buy an upfront pack for $1,500 for three years or $2,500 for five years, so averaging $500 a year, which for this segment is pretty much par for the course and doesn't really stand out above its rivals. Insurance on the XC60? In the last 12 months, the median budget direct customer spent $1,092 to comprehensively insure a new Volvo XC60. Everybody's situation varies and your premium will vary based on things insurers take into account, like where you live, how you garage the car, and your driving history. However, fuel consumption remains the one standout cost in terms of ownership of this vehicle. Like I mentioned at the start of the video, neither the B5 nor the B6 petrol engines are particularly fuel efficient. They're both gonna use around 10 liters per 100 kilometers in combined driving, a little bit less on the highway, around 7.5 or eight liters per 100 Ks. This car no longer offers a diesel. There is an updated plug-in hybrid coming called the Recharge, but that's gonna be even more expensive than this R design, so it's kind of horses for courses. If you can live with consumption of about 10 liters per 100 Ks, then that's completely fine. The warranty on the XC60 is five years and unlimited kilometers. So what is the Volvo XC60 like to drive? Well, I've already hinted up front that this is a very comfortable car, particularly 
if you opt for the air suspension and 4C chassis, which I think is a good value upgrade at $2,600. And I'll come back to that and the reasons why I think you should upgrade to it later in this segment. But first of all, let's talk about the two uh, petrol engines on offer and then the plug-in hybrid. So uh, coming soon will be a facelifted version of the XC60 Recharge plug-in hybrid. Uh, which is based on the B6 engine that I'm driving now, but it has received a larger battery and will get more range for 2022 uh, than the 40 kilometers or so that you could get out of it in the pre facelift version. And for well-heeled buyers that are seeking the most economical XC60 and one that you can drive around town in pure electric mode, the XC60 Recharge will be perfect but it's not gonna be an affordable hybrid option. In fact, there aren't really affordable hybrid options in the luxury SUV segment. Usually, you're required to go for a plug-in hybrid, which continue to be pretty XE, or something like the BMW iX3 or Audi e-tron, which equally are not cheap options if you wanna go the full electric route. No doubt, in five or 10 years now, we'll be talking about the fact that Volvo only make an electric XC60, but for now, the sensible options continue to be the mild hybrid petrol engines and mild hybrid is the main change for 2022. Um, the sort of T5 and T6 engines from last year have carried across but they now have a 48 volt mild hybrid system which generally helps. It doesn't palpably decrease fuel economy by that much. Uh, as I mentioned I've been averaging 10 litres per 100 k's in the B6 which is fine but not really anything to write home about. What the 48 volt system mostly does is improve refinement. Uh, it has an integrated starter generator, so the engine starts up seamlessly with no cranking noise. The start-stop system is absolutely seamless. And there's also a little bit of electric torque that fills in just when your foot brushes the accelerator pedal. So instead of there being that noticeable turbo lag, particularly on the B5 or T5 engine as it previously was, it's now a more seamless experience and it gets going more quickly. So the mild hybrid system is helping this car, but mostly from a refinement perspective. The main choice you're gonna have is whether to go for the B5 powertrain with either the entry-level momentum trim or the luxurious inscription variant, or the B6, which you can only get with the R-Design trim as I have it here. The engines are very similar. They're both two litre turbocharged petrol four-cylinder engines. The main difference is that the B6 also has a supercharger and that means the outputs are different. So in the B5, the cars make 183 kilowatts of power and 350 newton meters of torque. Whereas here in the B6, you get 220 kilowatts of power, which is definitely a sizable upgrade and you can feel the difference. There's just more urgency to the B6. But that being said, the B5 is a strong engine that doesn't hang around. So I guess it makes sense that if you want your XC60 with sporty styling outside and the most urgency before stepping up to a plug-in hybrid, which is generally not quite as seamless an experience as a mild hybrid in my experience, uh, the B6 can make sense, but it is $6,000 more expensive than the B5 inscription. Volvo's petrol engines don't sound quite as good as BMW's B48 turbo four cylinder, but it's not that far off. It's not bad to listen to. There's a little growl to the exhaust and actually a nice raspy note as it changes gears through the eight speed ASIN torque converter automatic transmission, which is a perfectly serviceable unit. The shifts are usually seamless. Every so often you can catch it out. There'll be a slightly harder shift. It doesn't have the seamlessness of the ZF torque converter eight speed that you see in BMW's cars, but it's okay. One thing you will note, which is slightly unusual, is that there are no gear shift paddles behind the steering wheel, which for an R design variant that's kind of sporty is a bit weird. But you can knock the little shifter down here left and right if you want to play around with the gears. That being said, left to its own devices, it's a talky thing. It does a pretty good job of shifting around by itself. Ride and handling is actually where the XC60 separates itself from most of its rivals. Uh, it's probably on the softer side of the continuum rather than the firmer or the comfortable side rather than the sportier, even in our design trim like this. However, going for larger wheels will diminish the ride and increase the turn in sharpness like on any car. But there is a magic trick that you can perform, which is optioning that $2,600 air suspension, which means the ride, even on big 21 inch wheels that are standard on the R design is absolutely more than acceptable. In fact, it's very good. 
and the fact that you can option that air suspension across the range makes me think that a vehicle like an Inscription on slightly smaller 20 inch wheels uh, would be absolutely the way to go. That's exactly how I would option mine. Inscription, Napa leather, Bowers and Wilkins and air suspension. So you'd be looking at a car that was probably still grazing $100,000, which I'm not pretending it's cheap, but it would be a very nicely outfitted vehicle. Just on that note, don't forget about and don't write off the Volvo V60 Cross Country, which is a very similar size to this SUV. It doesn't ride as high. You can't get air suspension on that car, which is a shame, but it still rides okay. But most notably, it's a lot cheaper than the XC60. So even optioned up with things like cooled Napa leather, Bowers and Wilkins and a panoramic sunroof, the, X, the V60 Cross Country, I should say, comes out about $15,000 cheaper than a similarly specified XC60. So definitely something to keep in mind there if you like your wagons, as I do. So the ride is absolutely beautiful on air suspension. The handling is definitely good enough. And a BMW X3 or Audi Q5 definitely feels sportier, can be thrown into corners with greater pace, more urgency. They have more, I guess, uh, liberally tuned ESC systems, but the level of grip on offer and traction on offer in the XC60 is good. All wheel drive is standard. This car is fitted with Pirelli P0 tires, which have heaps of grip. You sit relatively low in the car. The seats are comfortable and sporty. The view out is good. We've got big mirrors, which means you can actually see. You can see out the back okay. We've got a good 360 degree camera. And Volvo's full safety suite is standard across the range. So you get stuff like adaptive cruise control, forwards and reversing AEB, lane keep assist with strong lane centering, Volvo's pilot assist technology, which allows some hands-off driving at low, at low speed, like in traffic jams, and uh, blind spot monitoring with front and rear cross traffic alert too. And Volvo's safety systems are actually tuned really well, definitely among the best in the segment. Uh, so this car is a relaxing partner on long drives, uh, I tend to find. So those are my thoughts on driving the XC60. This is a lovable car to drive. It's comfortable, it's easy to drive. The powertrains have enough go in them, definitely. It's just a question of whether the fuel consumption is good enough for you, or if you want to spend even more and buy into the recharge plug-in hybrid. So what are my final recommendations for the updated 2022 Volvo XC60? Well, personally, I would skip the B6R design trim. It certainly looks cool. You do get more power, 220 kilowatts versus 183 kilowatts, but it costs $6,000 more than the Goldilocks spec, which is the B5 inscription that I would choose instead. It looks a little bit more luxurious outside rather than sporty. The interior also feels a little bit more luxurious rather than sporty. And with that six grand you pocket, you can option up desirable stuff like the lifestyle package with Harman Kardon or even the Bowers and Wilkins and the adaptive air suspension with the 4C chassis for basically what you would have spent on an R design anyway. And I think that's probably buying a little bit smarter when it comes to an XC60, but it is horses for courses and I'm keen to hear your opinion. So let me know down below this video are you considering an XC60? What do you think of this car? Do you already own a Volvo XC60? And what has your experience been like? While you're down there, make sure to hit subscribe and the notification bell. And as always, thanks for watching Chasing Cars.